Welcome to chapter 5. So in this chapter we will discuss circuits, electrical circuits and circuit elements. So in this lecture, in this chapter we will discuss how to schematically represent circuits using diagrams and second we will see resistances in both series and in parallel and in the third part we will see complex resistor combinations. So let us take a look at the first one schematic diagrams. So after you complete this section you should be able to interpret and construct circuit diagrams. You should be able to identify circuits either as an open circuit or a closed circuit and you should be able to deduce the potential difference across the circuit load given the potential difference across the battery terminals. So what are schematic diagrams? A schematic diagram is a representation of a circuit that uses lines to represent wires and we use different symbol to represent different components of the circuit. For example, a wire, of a, a wire or a conductor is generally represented as a straight line using lines and resistances are generally represented by a zigzag line. Bulb with a circle around a zigzag line, basically a resistor that can light up. A plug is represented by a circle with two uh, unevenly uh, shaped uh, lines. You have a battery, you have two unevenly shaped lines with two terminals. So these are the two terminals. The longer one is the positive terminal, the shorter one is the negative terminal. So a switch, so you already already know what's a switch. Capacitor, you already have seen a capacitor, two parallel plate symbol. So this is the symbol for a capacitor. So these are the common symbols that we generally use for circuit diagrams. So what is an electrical circuit then? So an electrical circuit is basically a set of electrical components that is connected in such a way that they provide one or more complete paths for the movement of charges. So remember the term again, it's a set of electrical components that are connected such a way that they provide one or more complete paths for the movement of charge. So they are basically connected in such a way that the flow, the charge can flow through them in any given path that is mentioned in the diagram. So the diagram, a schematic diagram of a circuit is called as a circuit diagram. And any element or group of elements in that circuit that dissipates energy is called as a load. So this is important because we will come back to this word again and again. Next, a circuit which contains a complete path for electrons to follow is called as a closed circuit. And without a complete path, there is no charge flow and therefore there is no current. So remember that when a circuit has to have a complete path, meaning from wherever it starts, if it ends at the same point where it started, then that is called as a closed circuit. If it does not have any charge flow or any current, we call that an open circuit. So what the one common word that you will generally hear is short circuit. Short circuit is basically a closed circuit that does not contain a load. So a short circuit is a closed circuit that does not contain a load. And these short circuits can be hazardous because they can store up a lot of energy because without dissipation of energy, there can be a lot of buildup of energy and that buildup of energy can cause problems. Next, the source of potential difference and electrical energy is called in the circuits is the EMF. EMF refers to electromotive force. So it's called as the electromotive force. The device that converts non-electrical energy into electrical energy is what we call as a source of EMF. Most common sources of EMF are batteries or generators. Now a battery by its, by its own nature has a little bit of a resistance that is inside it because notice that if you look at the general construction of a battery, a battery contains the inner electrolytic material and outer you have on the outside you have the uh, nodes. These nodes are generally metal and there is an interface between the electrolyte and the metal uh, or the terminal. This resistance is called as internal resistance. So the internal resistance is generally neglected because it is really small. The EMF generally equals the potential difference across the source sources two terminals. So that internal resistance is something that uh, for example can heat up the battery. For example, if you hold the battery after a long uh, usage, if you notice that it, uh, it uh, feels hot, it means that that hotness is coming because of the internal resistance of the battery. Next, next let us talk about terminal voltage. What is terminal voltage? It is the potential difference across the battery's positive and negative terminals. So it is the difference, uh, the potential between them. 
and this terminal voltage is generally less than the EMF because terminal voltage so V terminal is EMF minus the current that flows through and the resistance R so let me write it as small r so r here represents the internal resistance so this is the formula for terminal voltage of a given battery now the general potential difference across a load it generally always equals the terminal voltage so use the things that we have learned now so pause the video right here and try to answer these questions Next, let's move on to the resistances in parallel and in series. So, after you complete this section, you should be able to calculate the equivalent resistance for a circuit of resistors in series. And you should also be able to find the current and the potential difference across each resistor in the circuit. Second, you should also be able to calculate the equivalent resistance for a circuit of resistors in parallel. And to be able to find the current and the potential difference across each resistor in the circuit. Now, let's start with resistors in series. What is a series circuit? So, a series circuit is can be described as two or more components of a circuit that provide a single path for the current. So, a series circuit provides a single path for current flow. Sorry, current or charge flow. Now, resistors in series is the main principle here to remember is that they carry all the same current so the current passing through them is the same but the equivalent resistance can be found in the through you can be used to find the current in the circuit so the equivalent resistance in a series circuit is the sum of individual resistances in the circuit so what does that mean say for example i have uh, you know a couple of resistors that are connected in series so this is an example of a series circuit notice that if I connect this to a battery, the current is flowing through in one single path. So we started right here at the positive terminal and we are ending it up at the negative terminal. So there is only one single path. So this is the reason why we call this a series circuit. Next, let's say if you have three resistances R1, R2 and R3. If I want to know what is the current that is flowing through it and given that the voltage V is there. So the formula for the current is the formula for current here or the voltage here is i into r equivalent equivalent is the equivalent resistance of the circuit equivalent resistance is what is the total resistance here so the total resistance in the circuit when it's a series connection r equivalent here can be found out as r1 plus r2 plus R3. So this is the R equivalent that we have here. So if you want to find the individual voltage on each of them, so you have V1, you have V2 and you have V3. So V1 becomes IR1, V2 becomes IR2 and V3 becomes IR3. So main point to remember is that in a series circuit, the current is equal across all the resistance resistors so the current is equal across all resistors so if there are four resistances we'll add up all those four resistances if there are five we'll add up five of them so for example we have two of them here we have combined this so to form the coupled resistance now the current flow here is delta v by r equivalent so you can calculate so let's try this example here what is given here a 9 volt battery is connected to 4 light bulbs as shown in the figure. Find the equivalent resistance of the circuit. Remember that each bulb by themselves actually have their own resistance. The resistances that are given are 2 ohm, 4 ohm, 5 ohm and 7 ohm. So let's write it down as R1 is 2 ohm, R2 is 4 ohm, R3 is 5 ohm and R4 is 7.0 ohm. And the voltage delta V is given as 
9 volts here. So, 9 volts. So, let us copy this data and let us try and solve this problem. So this is the data that is given here. So let us draw a simple schematic diagram. You have the battery. The battery is 9 volts and that is connected to 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 2 ohm. This is 4 ohm this is 5 ohm, this is 7 ohm. Now they are asking us to find the current and the, the equivalent resistance. So the equivalent resistance is basically saying that if I take all of these resistors and combine them into one equivalent resistance, what is that value? So what would be that value? Now let us try and find the equivalent resistance first. So R equivalent becomes R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4. Notice that this is a series circuit. So you have 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7. So 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 plus 6 is 18. So you have a total of an equivalent resistance of 18 ohm. Now if you want to find the current now I, so we know the formula for delta V is I times R equivalent. We want I here. I becomes delta V over R equivalent. Delta V is 9 volts by R equivalent is 18 ohm. So 9 ones, 9 twos. So you get 0 0.5. The, the unit for current is ampere. So the current that is passing through the circuit is 0 0.5 amps. So the I value here is 0 0.5 amps. So this is your answer. So this is how you can solve problems when you have series circuits. So use the principles that we learned right now and pause the video right here and try to solve these problems. Next let us talk about resistors in parallel. So what is a parallel circuit? A parallel circuit is where we are arranging two or more components of a circuit that provide separate conducting paths for the current because the components are connected across a common point or a junction. For example, these are the two common points that we have here and all the resistors that we have here are connected across those two common points. So which means that when current flows from one point to the other point, it flows here, 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 here here and all of them will come through in every one of them and come back here and form. So which means that here remember the uh, idea behind uh, in a series circuit. So in a series circuit the current stays the same. And voltage differs across each resistor. In a parallel circuit, it is the exact opposite. So we can take this exact same sentence. And we can rub off the current and voltage and flip the words. So here, the voltage stays the same across the circuit, but current differs across each resistor, so in each resistor. So this is the idea behind a series and a parallel circuit. So in a parallel circuit, the voltage will stay the same, but the current will differ in each of the resistors. So use this principle now and let us try and see how a resistor looks it in parallel. So for example, we can think of uh, let us say two resistors. So when the current flows here, the current splits into two paths. It flows across the circuit and again combines and finally comes out 
right comes back to the same point remember that it's still a closed circuit and it's still gonna be the same but the difference here is that across the two resistors you get two different currents but the voltage stays the same so the voltage stays the same so what is the equivalent resistance in a parallel circuit so the r equivalent how do you calculate that so the formula for that is 1 by r equivalent is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r so the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of reciprocals of individual resistances so this is the uh, point for this is the formula for parallel resistors so this is the formula for equivalent resistance in parallel circuits now what happens if you have three resistors let's say i have a diagram So let's say we have this diagram here. So let's say I have three resistors now in place of two resistors. So we have R1, R2 and R3. So remember that the voltage across them is the same. So V, V and V. The current here is I but for each resistor it has its own current. So it becomes I1, I2 and I3. So the total current I here is the sum of individual currents I1 plus I2 plus I3 but the voltage will stay the same so voltage across the circuit will stay the same but the current will change so here for the formula to calculate I here so we know that again the formula is V equal to IR so delta V equals I times V equivalent so when you want to calculate R equivalent I becomes delta V over R equivalent and if you want to find out individual currents here I1 is V by R1 so delta V by R1 I2 is delta V by R2 and I3 is delta V by R3 so once you know the voltage you can calculate the current across each individual resistances so that's the difference between here in remember in the last problem we talked about v1 v2 and v3 here we'll talk about i1 i2 and i3 so this is the idea behind a parallel circuit so let's take a problem and let's try to solve the problem here so a 9 volt battery is connected to four resistors as shown to the right find the equivalent resistance for the circuit and the total current in the circuit so they have 7 ohm 5 ohm 4 ohm and 2 ohm and all of them are connected across one single terminal so which means that this is a parallel circuit So let's try and take the data here. So let's try and draw the diagram here. So you have a 9 volt battery. We have 2, 4, 5, 7, so 2 ohm, 4 ohm, 5 ohm, 7 ohm and this is the current here I. So for each individual resistance here you get an individual current. So we have I1, I2, I3 and I4. Because we cannot calculate the I current directly, we will have to calculate the individual currents across each of the resistors or you can calculate using the equivalent resistance principle. Now what is the equivalent resistance here, R equivalent here becomes 1 by R1 plus sorry 1 by R equivalent becomes 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3 plus 1 by R4. So which is going to be 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 over 7. So 1 by 2 is 0.5, 1 by 4 is 0.25 plus 1 by 5 is 0.20 plus 1 by 7 is 0.1257 so using all the data here so let me reconfirm 1 by 7 so it is 0 0.1428 sorry 143 
So adding all of these up, you have 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.20 plus 0 0.143. So the equal uh, 1 by R equivalent here becomes 1.093 ohm. So 1 by 0 0.1.093. R equivalent now becomes 1 by 1.093. So 1 by 1.093 becomes 0 0.915 ohm. So this is the equivalent resistance in this circuit. Now there are two ways of calculating the current here. One way is directly using the formula I equals delta V by R equivalent delta V is 9 ohm by the equivalent resistance is 0 0.915. So 9.0 divided by 0 0.915 becomes 9.836 amps. So the current in the circuit is 9.836 ampere. So in this circuit, this is how we can find the current. Now, if you wanted to find the other way, we have to calculate I1 is delta V by R1, so which is 9 over 2, so which becomes 4.5 amps. I2, which is delta V by R2, which is 9 by 4. So 9 divided by 4, that gives you 2.25 amps I3 is delta V by R3 so which is 9 by 5 which is gonna be 1.8 amps I4 which is delta V by R4 which is gonna be 9 by 7 so which becomes 1.285 amps now adding all of the values up you have I which becomes equal to so 1.286 I'm sorry so I becomes equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 so which becomes 4.5 plus 2.25 plus 1.8 plus 1.286 so you have 4.5 plus 2.25 plus 1.8 plus 1.286 so which gives you the same answer 9.836 amps. So this is one another way for calculating the current through the circuit. One way is to calculate the equivalent resistance, the other way is to calculate the resistance itself. So with that we end resistors in series and parallel. So pause the video right here and try to solve these problems.